Okay, Ramki, you're presenting. Or not. No. Um, okay, so um, I guess that we should start with the regular. Ah, hello, Fred. Uh, we should start with the uh, general rem reminder that this uh, call is recorded um, and then uploaded at some point to YouTube. Um, and uh, the other thing is to remind of uh, everyone that uh, you should, uh, or at least you are invited to enter your name uh, into the meeting minutes. Uh, the link is uh, posted in the chat. Sorry, I was having some trouble with my audio. Can you hear me now? Yep, we do. Uh, so Ed is not joining. So do you want to take over leading the call? I can share the screen. Yeah, that sounds good. So go ahead and share the screen and uh, we'll get started. Uh, should be this guy here. Okay. Okay, as always, uh, please add your name to the um, to the meeting notes. And if you if you're not able to add your name, please uh, ask us and we'll add it for you. So before we get started, is there anything that anyone would like to add to the agenda? Um, so, uh, Fred, uh, uh, thought was um, in the last use case call, we were chatting quite a bit about a common data plane API. Uh, maybe um, if you have time, probably we could, and then I don't know how much he proceeded. We could even chat about it here, depending on the time and other topics. Yeah, so I think, I think that sounds good. So. Go ahead and add it to the uh, to the agenda. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get started with the main uh, with the main things then. So we have three recurring talks now. One is um, uh, the NS well, this, this particular meeting, we have the network service mesh document uh, on Wednesdays and the NSM use case on Fridays. So we also are coordinating with the CNF test bed, uh, birds of a feather. So, and that's every other week. So all of these calls happen at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Oh, hey, Ramki, can you add that to the to the very bottom? Because it's, otherwise it's going to get missed there. Um, anyways, so we have on March 28th and 29th, we have Service Mesh Day, of which we have a talk in the, um, in the Service Mesh Day where we're going to be showcasing uh, Envoy and, and Network Service Mesh working together. Oh, great. So... I have a little bit of work to finish on that, but uh, it's, I have a clear path now. We also have a Intel out of the box network developer meetup that's coming up on April the 2nd, the day before ONS. Uh, definitely, if, if you're going to be in town on that day and are willing to come a day earlier, then I would really appreciate having people there to talk to people about network service mesh and uh, to to let people know that like what uh, what it is you're expecting to get out of it or help people learn. We have ONS coming up of which we have a series of of talks uh, accepted in a panel discussion where I'm pretty sure these topics will come up based upon the people there. We have we will also we should also have a booth demo uh, as well and uh, Prem and I need to co 
coordinate on that. So uh, Prem, we need to have a conversation soon so we can make sure that gets sure. all set up properly. Yep. We, we have MPLS SDN NFV coming up. Uh, no talks there as far as I know, uh, but topic should be interesting. We have Container World 2019 coming up with a talk accepted uh, by Prem from Lumina. And so that'll be in Santa Clara, uh, California. We have KubeCon EU uh, coming up. And so if you're going to attend, uh, make sure you book your hotels now. We have also a co-located event at KubeCon EU. Uh, I need to hit add up on the call for papers for that to make sure we don't miss it. Um, we also have KubeCon in Shanghai coming up, of which the call for papers already closed. I'm not aware of any talks that have been submitted, but if uh, anyone, uh, if anyone's attending, uh, let us know, and we'll if there, we'll we'll see if we can pair you up with with interesting people. We have ONS Europe in Antwerp, Belgium coming up, of which the call for paper is currently open and closes on June 16th. Uh, feel free to submit a talk in that area. We also have MEF in 2019 in LA, which was very inconveniently the located, not that it's inconveniently located, but rather the timing is, is inconvenient because of KubeCon in San Diego. So we'll have a little bit of fun coordinating between the two of them because we we care about both. We finally have, so anyways, if, if there's any other events that anyone is aware of, uh, definitely let us know and we'll add it to this list. And with that, let's head to the CNCF project proposal. So can you open the project proposal up please? I request Fred Dahl. So, so uh, Prem and I will have some uh, uh, good updates by next week, we are thinking. So more aligned with ONS, uh, we would definitely take uh, some time this week and probably we can review it next Tuesday. Um, and then um, uh, submit just before the ONS. Uh, that was sort of the, uh, you know, one of the thought process we had earlier to align with ONS. Um, yeah, so I just uh, want to make sure we get this done a bit sooner because we have a demo that we're supposed to be showing off. So, uh, and uh, Prim is uh, uh, very kindly offered to help with that. So, no, exactly. So the let's let's say let's set a deadline. So we will have our uh, uh, input with. I mean, uh, can we directly modify? Is it possible to directly modify or um, uh, to directly modify which thing? Uh, the uh, proposal or how do we go about it? Ah, so this proposal is different. So the proposal that's up on the screen is a is the CNCF proposal for being part of the TOC. So for the proposal, I don't, I don't believe, I don't know if it's been submitted yet. I don't believe it has. Uh, so for this one, the best way to go to, to manipulate this one is, um, uh, can you can you go to the very top so we can get the URL of of it? So do you see it's under network service mesh slash network or sorry it's under Ed Warnicky slash TOC. So this is where it gets a bit weird. You can make a yeah, pull request it, on a pull it request. Is here. It the link is here in the in the meeting minutes. So the the actually uh, I had a chat just before the call with with that. He's sorry that he cannot join, but the thing is that uh, we have very so last week he was at the open source uh, leaders uh, uh, leadership summit, and he was able to reach out to two uh, of the TOC members of the CNCF uh, uh, TOC members, uh, and we have um, kind of secured their sponsorship. They are put their names are put here. Uh, we have Joe Beda and Matt Klein. Uh, so, uh, based on this uh, and some some other communications, uh, the proposal is that we do a final kind of review today to to the best of our um, of our poss possibilities. Uh, and uh, if someone has, uh, I mean, uh, someone raises some big concern and wants to change something, we can post postpone. 
but if we kind of agree that, that this is the text that we want to submit, uh, it will push it uh, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday. That's, uh, um, that was the plan. So, um, no, certainly, totally uh, spot on. Thanks, Joe. I was also talking to Joe in person. Uh, but one of the uh, general feedback I also heard was it's good to add sort of the distributed cloud use cases. Um, at least, um, uh, you know, when I spoke to him, a broader picture, I do want to make sure that some of those is reflected. It's just that probably we may need a little bit of time. That's why I'm requesting. Uh, it's a little, uh, probably I may need more than a week, uh, sorry, more than a couple of days. Um, that's why the request is if you can set the deadline to maybe, um, you know, uh, next week, uh, I mean, the first thing next week, uh, I mean, review to the next call and submit, uh, that we much appreciate it. Basically, yeah, just so bring the, the, reflect the distributed cloud use cases. Okay, so the, the only problem we're going to run into potentially is that we're, we're hoping that we can get this part of the CNCF before KubeCon. And uh, so if we get it approved, then that'll just bring like, that'll just be a lot of good things around that overall. Uh, so the problem we're running into is because the TOC had an election, they have a backlog of, uh, of agenda items and projects. And so for us to, to join in, we, we end up at the back of the queue when we, when we submit. And so the longer that we wait, the less likely it is that it gets looked at before, before KubeCon. So that's the only um, thing. So, um, um, so, uh, Fred, how about this? So, give me uh, 24 hours. Let me take a stab. I can understand the uh, urgency. So, let me uh, let me take a stab at that part. I know I took the AI, but it's just been crazy. So, let me take a stab at that part. And then uh, we can um, uh, finalize tomorrow. It will not be a big addition, but bringing out the use cases in a crisp way. Yeah, so, that sounds good. Thank, thanks, for, thanks for your understanding. Wow. So, yeah. So one of the question is, uh, uh, Fred, if we submit this, uh, uh, is it possible to edit it again, or uh, it's a working document, right? So just so, curious. So the way that that we were that we were uh, doing it up till now is that you just go and add your comments. So um, I think that my comments were some somewhere here um, in the in document, and everyone else is just saying, okay, uh, can you change this? Can you change that? And here, I have, for example, put my comments about the release process, and then it incorporated it. So uh, the best, I think, that the way that you can do is just go here in the changed file and start saying, "Okay, can we add blah 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 blah, whatever you, you want to." Add. Okay. Uh, okay. That would be the fastest, and I guess uh, everyone then can see it, um, reply, suggest things, and like this. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I yeah, thanks, uh, Nikolai. Cool. So, so I think, um, yeah. So, so it, once once we put in the pull request, my intuition is it probably could have some minor changes to it, but uh, I'm not certain with that because what um, will happen is we'll do the pull request, and uh, that pull request will then end up on their on their yeah, um, here. Site. Exactly here. I mean, so, uh, that's what I was uh, trying to see how, how, for example, it goes for the other guys. That's yeah, actually, thing. what we should probably do is once a pull request comes in, if there's any changes that are that are necessary, then they no longer go to Ed Warnicky slash TOC for the pull request and, or comments. Instead, they will go to the um, to the pull request from uh, from the CNC, CNCF slash TOC. So, uh, so my guess is we could probably still add some stuff through that particular process, but we probably want to keep those to minor edits as much as possible, mm -hmm. unless they flag something that's really urgent. Uh, so um, so, um, um, so uh, let me do this, Fred, then. So what I'll do is I'll work with Prem on the changes right on us today. I'll also make sure that I uh, have a quick sync up call with the Ed on the changes proposed so that, I mean, basically, um, you know, we can get to it much quickly and then target submission tomorrow. We can all review probably uh, offline and make a submission tomorrow. Uh, so do, 
do you did you already uh, look at the document because i looked I at was... the document we have some yes uh, nikolay I some see. ideas it just that just didn't get the time to actually make that nice edit we are looking to sort of uh, uh, get the use case to a point where we have some good clarity mm -hmm. i think that clarity is there we just want to reflect it it's mm -hmm. probably an hour or two work but we want to get some crisp uh, content here back from the use case and the mm -hmm. architecture impact we're able to create that's it Do you um, want to so, to add it here in the description? I mean, in this first first part, or uh, it would be it would be a little bit in several places. Description in several places. Okay. So um, I'll uh, I'll work on it uh, today. So basically, that's uh, so Prem will find some time uh, early today so that we can also sync up with Ed. Sure, okay. Okay. And good. probably with uh, Fred Nikolay also, we can quickly sync up. Yeah. So, uh, so a couple things on this as well. So, um, please, please make sure that you go over the um, the contents for for those of you who are who are listening in, and make sure that uh, make sure and any type of help on this would be would be appreciated. Whether whether it's some substantial. Uh, addition or even just a, a minor typo or the wording if you could if the wording could be more clear like anything is, is helpful in this space and so uh, in terms a few couple things I want to point out as well so the current sponsors that we have from uh, from the list are, are very strong so we have Joe Beta listed as a sponsor who, who is the one of the founders of Kubernetes and Matt Klein who's the founder of Envoy So I think we have some pretty good backing on on the for the initial for the initial entry, uh, and so it's primarily up to us in order to in order to hit it out of the park. Um, so if and we also have as existing sponsors Bell Canada, Cisco, and Doc AI. So if if anyone wants to to add anything in on that, oh sorry, Orange, Red Hat, and VMware. So if anyone else wants to. Add their company into that as well as being interested in it, and uh, wanting you know, please, uh, please add yourself to the to the list as well if you're if you're able to and you have the legal ability to do so. Um, and so, with that, I mean the, the the request in this scenario is help us help us polish this, help us make sure that everything is is represented that we care about that. Uh, Uh, and help us make sure that it's a very well polished document. Uh, okay, so uh, what's the agreement? We will review again tomorrow. What? Maybe, yeah, yeah we have... I I think we sh I think we should. Um, Let's 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 get the the addition from from Ramki. So you get that in as as soon as possible, and I think the rest of it we we can probably we can probably do online. But let's let's make sure that we, at the very minimum, commit to some times uh, to to get to get this thing in, and of course yeah, we're, so, we're um, plan as well. Um. So I'll have my. Uh, work with Prem and then get all the comments and probably I'm hoping to sync up with Ed also because he's driving it. So make sure that uh, he's in sync. Uh, so basically, uh, so we can target. I think my take is we can target submitting tomorrow. Yeah, I think I think that sounds good. So let's so let's go ahead and uh, so Ed is out for the morning. So. He, I don't know if he's going to be around in the afternoon or not, but uh, yeah, if if you want, I can I can provide some feedback as well. Uh, you, you also, uh, and I'm I'm pretty sure Ed is getting a lot of rest right now, so he can be back in good form. Sure, uh, certainly. Yep. <laughs> so. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Fred. Yeah. Yeah. And knowing Ed, he'll he'll probably jump up and do something anyway. Because like, <laughs> I know that, and and he generally sent a note that Tuesday afternoon he is free. So that's what he's relatively free Tuesday afternoon. That's why I was counting on that. So I, I saw the other email. So <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Okay, so what else? Um, is there anything else on this particular uh, document, or are we are we good to go on this for the moment? Cool. So don't hear any dissent for moving on. So let's go back to the agenda and uh, let's talk about releases. So Nikolai, you have the floor. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I just wanted to propose um, um, a release name poll. Uh, so essentially, uh, because there were not re really many feedback on the naming, uh, I effectively chose and proposed, and this is already merged uh, uh, in the um, in the main repo uh, that we use the. Um, the names um, of the constellations, uh, like the Latin names. So I chose three names here proposed, uh, like, you know, start with A. Uh, so uh, my proposal here would be, uh, if anyone has any preference, just put your names be besides. We'll probably do this for the next couple of meetings just to, to, to gather some names and then we'll just select one. That, that's that's the best that I can think of. Other, the other thing is to just send an email there uh, through the through the through the group, but I don't think that this works very well. Uh, or maybe I can create a doodle poll. I don't know what what would be the, the best. I think that the 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 meeting minutes should be should be good enough to just gather this like type of voting. I hope I'm not muted. No, we can hear you. No, you're no. not. Okay. Um, so, uh, are there any preferences on the 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 way that we vo vote for this? Or I mean, do do we keep it in the notes? Do we use some other form? So, do we do we want to stick with the A B C approach, or is is there is there another approach that that we want to take? I think that I would just, be good. A B C proposal seems to be good and less confusing. Also, I also like the first one. The I believe that is around galaxy names, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Galaxies and stars and yeah, yeah. something something very universal. Yeah, about it. So I use this this link for a, a reference. Just pick three kind of random names. So yeah, uh, of course, other pr proposals are also welcome. Okay, let's let's just keep it here. If some someone has any preference, just put put your name beside your favorite, or propose another one. But yeah. um, I actually uh, re regarding this, I just figured out. So uh, Ramki, uh, I will take maybe a couple of minutes before I will give the floor to you. So um, licensing, I think this is also again. Um, somehow related to the release, but uh, we are supposed to have a push license V2, but then we import a lot of components, which we are not really sure what their license is. I'm, I'm, at least I'm not aware if we are. Um, um, yeah, we've, we've used them in the past, but we definitely need to go over them again make sure that everything is is set up properly and clear i think that there's some tooling that can help us with that um but um yeah we have to to, to look up a little bit yeah and um, also one other thing is we also need to be careful about the um, third party libraries that we would need to use which means uh, uh, we would need to enable the scanning of uh, the code just to ensure that uh, whoever gets a new library complies with that of the licensing thing. This is standard yeah. in open source. So oh, yeah. essentially, 
And this is uh, the list of the components that we depend on today, modules. Um, yeah, we should... Most of these would be compatible, but I guess that we have some, you know, that could be, should be checked. Yeah, there are tools that are available where you can link it to CI, CD. Uh, I can send you the list to Nicole, and then we can see, to begin with, we can probably see if there is any uh, f uh, free trial that is available. We can just uh, enable it, and then it scans through and gives a report. Okay. Yeah, so it's something that would be good to do would be to add that to a uh, pull request. So we can we can set up a, a little um, uh, checker that just does a go mod vendor. So because then that'll download all of the dependencies that are listed there. And, that, and then we'll then run the license uh, scanner on that vendor list. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that yeah, that's all I wanted to, to, to ask here and to just discuss a little bit. Um, Ramki, common data plane API. Um, do you need to present sure. something? Is there a link that I can open for you? Um, no, it's more of a discussion. Um, in fact, um, um, so maybe, um, I would like to actually take some, I'm looking at the document and doing the update given the urgency. Um, if the team is good, they can proceed that I will, I'm just going to start focusing on editing the document right away. Uh, the proposal, sorry. Or we can probably do it um, um, next week after some more discussion on the use case team, but Yeah. Uh, so what about this common data plane API? Um, so the key was essentially one of the discussions that came up in the use case com, um, discussions was essentially um, um, a common data plane API around abstracting features such as, you know, rate limiting or um, other aspects across um, uh, software and hardware implementation. You have SRAO, you have SmartNex, you know, you have these different implementations. Then the idea was how can NSM provide value through a common data plane API? That was the um, um, essence of it, but we didn't get into details. Um, so that's what I thought we could deep dive, but my mind is now on the, <laughs> um, the absolute near-term target and I have several things to take care of today. So if the team wants to, I mean, discuss, continue discussing, uh, perfect time, but um, I may not be able to fully drive or, I mean, able to drive this, I can listen in, but not drive this today. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. so I, I I think that that do we, I will refer to the documentation call where we are discussing a lot about defining what data plane is, what is the wire, micro wire, link it, et cetera. And uh, my understanding is that uh, the data plane, like actually the network service data plane, uh, doesn't provide any f features beyond basic link, like point-to-point -point link. So rate hey, limiting, whatever hey, it's, yeah. Do you want to pull up the um, the glossary real quick? Yes. So I, I still need like um, Ed and Frederick and you to give it one more glance over, but the data plane has been like this super confusing like point of contention in a lot of the document calls and so mm -hmm. what i did was uh, i went through um, a lot of the specs and i broke down like what we were already working on all those little individual components and then from an nsm perspective we're kind of going with you know assuming that it we all agree on it tomorrow's call the um the data plane is basically anything that provides you all of these things um, so I know we were talking about like the whole concept of like a mechanism or a channel, um, but I actually found that, and I've been updating it in the um, the PowerPoint stuff, so I'll add this stuff mm -hmm. to this document later, but local mechanism is actually like the name of something in the code. And it's actually 90% of the time what we're talking about when we talk about a micro wire or all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, 
Do you have, oh. yeah, here we go. And so like the thing is, is whether I'm hitting like an end API service, which is in reality from a network standpoint, a control plane, um, you know, it doesn't matter. As long as an SM can reach it to something, whether it's a physical device, whether it's a kernel, whether it's an SDN abstraction, if it gives me the connection to the wires and the network service as a whole, then it's kind of the data plane basically. Um, it's gonna make a lot of networking people's heads explode. But in reality, NSM is gonna go and make a request to something. And basically what it's gonna request is connections and wires, which will ultimately turn into a service. And we don't care how we get that theoretically, as long as whatever we're making the request to provides that for us. Does that make sense? So Jeff, this is a uh, funny here from SnapRoute. Um, in my previous life, I've worked on a lot of uh, VNFs for the telcos. At a high level, I agree with you, Jeff. Um, no disagreements at all. But I think uh, what me and Ramki and um, um, Prem and others were discussing was how to create that abstraction layer, which is as simple as the goal you stated, mm -hmm. and still exploit the uh, the functional advantages of a, let's say, a DPDK or a VPP or a smart sure. link. So and you have to ask though, other than the fact that you're just going to request a network service, we have to kind of start to delineate. And this is something I've whined about to Ed and Frederick is I feel like NSM is trying to solve some of Kubernetes data plane challenges as opposed to making Kubernetes solve its own data plane challenges. But my answer to your exact question would be device plugins. Like yeah. whether it's, I'm requesting it from Kubernetes, I'm requesting it from OpenStack, or I'm requesting it from ODL, right? Like if I have SROV capable compute, like I've got NICs with, you know, um, in virtual devices or can, you know, containerized devices that have the drivers in them and stuff, a device plugin should say, I have this resource available. NSM, when you come in with your NSC or your NSE, you should say, I need to deploy this network service and it should make a request. Yeah, yeah Jeff, I understand those basics, you know, uh, absolutely. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying, so this common API though, like if I request this service and there's like, you know, the back end to reach out to Kubernetes and make this, you know, device plugin request, don't I still have a common API if all I have to do is write one network service? Yeah, the devil is going to be in the details. How do, how do you make sure that network service mesh is able to run on all kinds of hardware accelerated or a DPDK accelerated implementations? You know, if you go back up, the MemIF versus vhost user and all that, you know, mm -hmm. um, that's where the details are going to be. How the CNFs or the containers or the pods are going to interface with the data plane um, uh, and still extract the hardware accelerations that are present downstairs is going yeah, to be the so, key. So at, so at this particular moment, we focus primarily on enablement and not trying to make them have a uniform path once you've performed that enablement. So if you have something that speaks DBDK or you know, hey, you have something that knows how to interact with SROV or a kernel interface as an example, like it has to know how to actually properly interact with those. Like it doesn't obviate um, the need for for that. And I feel like there is uh, there is a good opportunity though for a uh, for a simple CNF library that knows how to deal with these type of these type of things. So in other words, you ask for a connection, and then it provides you with the ability to to work with whatever it is that you that your hardware supports and ends up abstracting it out uh, but I, I I think that that would be something that uh, network service mesh would enable uh, I'm not entirely sure that would be something that a network service mesh itself at least not the the, the main component it could be a, a side project on the NSM that's attached to it uh, as a library uh, that's it, that could be something that that could that that could support, uh, but the, the core get network service mesh or sorry get network service or connect me to this data plane or so on. Uh, I think I think we should be careful to not try to to merge these all into one uh, in, in, and rather force all the users into into one format format or one node because even with a nice client library that does ninety nine percent of what you want. 
there's still that 1% of things where when you need that flexibility, you really, really need it. And we, we don't want to force people into a, into a mold where they're not able to get the things that they need. The other thing is, I don't know if everybody knows, but um, I, am, I have contacts in Intel being the big service provider guy. I have access to their little brain trust. And um, when we, you know, we, we've mentioned DPDK a couple times. So the problem is, is Kubernetes doesn't give a crap about NUMA zoning, right? And so say I want to turn on huge pages, I deploy a container, I get, you know, a PCIe lane here, I get a node over here, and I get a memory channel over here, and none of them line up. Well, DPDK says, I'm not passing any of your packets because you don't meet my NUMA restrictions. So there's even like with these API challenges and stuff, if they're quickly solved, the fact is, is when we move into the Kubernetes space, I mean, we could probably get most of this done in the OpenStack space right now, but like there's going to just be things where like you could make the calls and you say, turn all this stuff on. And then if your infrastructure doesn't deploy it just right for you, you're not going to pass any traffic and you're going to be sitting there frustrated. So we are trying to work with like some of the, um, you know, upstream, um, contributors on fixing some of these problems or at least letting us toggle some of the restrictions off. But um, the fast data plane stuff in Kubernetes is still a challenge just because of how Kubernetes wants to place pods and namespaces. Yeah, Jeff, I think I kind of agree mo with most of your stuff. What I was trying to point out was it's probably a subtle point. Uh, it's about the TX and RX path of a container um, and in the last meeting, I was highlighting that uh, trying to marry yourself into, let's say, a SRIOE-based data plane has its implications. And so will be with DPDK or the upcoming SmartNICs and so on. So the critical path, the TX and RX, let's say it's a, going to be a MemIF or a vHost user. Uh, let's try to create an abstract interface so that the containers really, the parts really don't care what kind of a underlying data path they are dealing with. I'm not talking about get me a connection, that's a control plane function. I'm actually talking about the TXRX and the, and the packet interface that the pods will, uh, will have. You know? uh, right now with the evolving various flavors of data planes, uh, even on the VM side, I see there's so many ways to do the data plane inter interaction and that is causing a lot of vendor lock-ins and few other issues. So that's where I was trying to draw a caution. Um, um, but I kind of agree, you know, it has to be at an abstract level and the network service shouldn't care about the lower level details. Yeah, and that's a, that's but, uh, a good point. So during the negotiation... Sorry, my question I have for you, everyone is, that kind of problem is it really for NSM to solve? Exactly. So yeah, NSM that's is question. about that composition, and then if you want to want to go and complexify the, that that problem is an industry problem with everybody trying to fix something, and at some point NSM can try and help out, but I don't think it's it's, it's a role to solve this. Yeah, I, I, that's that, my personal opinion. That that's what I was trying to drive to. It's like. NSM could say, we support DBDK and we support SROV, just as an example, right? And so now, so now you have in your, in your data plane, your data plane, so the CNF may say that it supports those things. Your data plane might work out, oh, DBDK is fundamentally broken in this environment, but I have access to SROV, so we'll, uh, we'll give the user access to SR, SRIOV as part of that. And then work work with Kubernetes and the device plugin and so on, in order to drop in that uh, that device into uh, into your uh, pod, and the, then the the pod the software in the pod is responsible. It'll be told this is an SROV device, so the software in the pod is then responsible for interacting with that device in the correct way. So if someone wants to make a library that knows how to talk to multiple types of, of data, of, I guess you say local mechanisms, I think that'd be absolutely fantastic. And it would be a, a really amazing mix with network service mesh, but I, I don't think it's the core problem that network service mesh is trying to solve at this moment. But I do think it would be a good library to 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 work with or include or something that we can 
that uh, that we would that we would work very well with. And so, but I think the core network service mesh part itself uh, needs, at least from the the server aspects of it and the Kubernetes aspects of it, need to remain agnostic to to those problems. And we could add a layer down the line or a library down the line, like maybe an NSM CNF builder library or CNF li NSM CNF library. Uh, but that library, even if it fell under the NSM brand, would uh, would effectively be a standalone library that you could include in that that would not rely on NS on NSM itself to provide that uh, that functionality, other than perhaps being a client. Uh, or being able to to provide the the generator on the endpoint and and so on, but uh, but effectively it, it wouldn't it would not be part of the the core NSM server aspect of it if if that makes sense. Can so I make I, a suggestion? Because sure. I, I mean this is something that like Ian has been like losing his mind over as well. Like this exact same thing as we kind of gloss over some of the details on how like from a networking, sneaky networking person's perspective, the data plane's supposed to work, like the actual forwarding of packets. Like I was lured in, you know, when I saw this at KubeCon with like these delusions of grandeur for CNFs. And I think that's what kind of drew a lot of us in here. Um, I think it's maybe part of the use case call and Ramki, thanks for shifting it to Monday. I think I'll be able to start attending. Maybe for now too, we can start creating a list. So we're at least identifying what challenges are gonna arise around like data plane in the forwarding sense of the term and not from the network sense of the term, network service mesh sense, and just start chronicling that and stuff. Because I think part of the problem is, is a lot of times the more application-y people are like, yeah, 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 we, we get it that this is a concern, but we don't care about it, which is fine. But I think those of us that care about our packets getting in and out of these servers really, really fast, just, we, we get like the nervous tick when, we're not addressing it. So maybe as part of this use case, we start looking at like what these local mechanisms are and like, you know, it'd be nice if this library did exist because then you could just drop it in when you're creating an NSC, like call this library, get a MIF, get an SROV virtual forwarder, you know, inject it into this namespace, et cetera, et cetera, right? But I, I think part of the problem is, is we just keep glossing over it. And we told people that this was going to help them solve CNF challenges. And so if we're going to solve CNF, this, you know, to, the use case groups point is a huge part of that. And so maybe we should just start capturing what's needed. And then the people who really do want to focus on fast packet forwarding can kind of start working on that section of this within the NSM umbrella. Yeah. And, and I want to be careful with my wording on, on this. Like I think it, what you described is an incredibly important problem. So the question is, is that something that NSM as it is now should solve, or is that something that NSM should work with something, uh, which could be an NSM library, a client library, that that solves that problem. So, so my, my opinion is that NSM should remain simple, but should be compatible with and work with something that can that can help with these type of things. And I think that we can work up to a to a echo, essentially a, an ecosystem uh, that knows how to to solve these these type of problems and not not make the NSM core try to solve everything because then now we're talking about overcomplicating the the system but i do think it's an incredibly inc incredibly important problem to solve because even the rubber has to hit the road somewhere and that's it that's that's the that's the spot in terms of the in terms of the CNF so so it's definitely something that we that we need to that we definitely need to address so um, if I can also offer my my opinion here, I I agree with with all the conclusions here. I also would would vote for this to to kind of start converging on what these things are would look like more specifically. I think that what we can try to do is starting from the use cases, we can try to pinpoint some specific I don't know CNF and start looking at how this thing gets implemented in in re reality like is it a vpp based is it a dpdk based because i guess that that depending on that we can figure out different ways to to approach this library right i mean uh, i don't think that we should focus on uh, uh, very specific te technology but kind of having some some concrete example that and try to solve it and see how this looks like uh, 
Yeah, so Nicolette, the suggestion was, and we can get more details on the use case meeting. You have an abstraction but, um, agnostic to VPP or OVP. What do you thought of that? When I, I, write, I really like Frederick's so point of view. I, one example I can give out is that. Um, okay, but somewhere we in. Uh, oh, Someone's got sorry, a lot of can you hear me? Noise. Yeah, sorry. One expect, I, would re, I really like Frederick's point of view. One thing I would like to refer about the, how to integrate all those technologies on the data plane side is uh, in, within Ligato, there was a people proposed in DPP the MMIF, and they understood that sometimes a, a pod doesn't know MMIF and you need to find a way to make it work. And they actually said that let's build an upstream shim that you add to the pod that makes it MMIF compatible without having to build a complete DPP within a pod. That part, that was upstream part of the Ligato project. I see the same as an SM. So anybody, because there's something else, like right now in NetDev, people are proposing AF graph, so you don't even have a network stack in the, in the container. That will come up overall with communities at some point. There should be a, a roadmap for, for those kind of technologies that the day you have them, how to make them supportable in NSM. But that's not part of how NSM should work, should, should focus on. The trick is really getting access from the external world into a community spot where you have CNFs and then get out and how you can change CNFs within the community spots or multiple clusters and how to bring that out, to build that. I think for me as a provider, that's my main first con con concern. And through that, I will work out the details and the kinks of do I need SIOV, do I need the XDP, AAS XDP, do I need all those things? And that's where I think uh, I, I really see the focus needed to be done. Yeah, and there's there's a lot of the big question is sorry, go on. Uh, go ahead. There was a background noise. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, so I think um, I think a important uh, part in this is that we definitely so a lot of this stuff is still uh, uncharted territory in the CNF world. So, for example, there are, there are people who have loaded uh, the DBK within a within a container, and they've prototyped that. And uh, we've had some prototypes with loading these some of these things within uh, within pods, but with uh, but with some very severe workarounds. Uh, Taylor can tell you all about it later on if you ask him. Uh, but a large part of this is like how do we how do we land ourselves to a point where we can start to productize and start to work out where the limitations are, and we're trying to address some of them with Intel as an example with DBDK, uh, where uh, and with and with Kubernetes where you have like NUMA alignment problems and like how do you get NUMA alignment or uh, simultaneously how do you make sure the DBDK works even if there is an, an alignment problem because you can still get a significant performance increase, even if the alignment isn't there. So there's a lot of questions that are that are starting to come up with with uh, challenging the initial assumptions of each of these projects. And so we so we have we have a lot of work to go through in order to uh, in order to make some of these particular use cases work. So that's going to involve the broader community. So what's great about this though is that we have in this call, we have the people, the experts necessary, and the people with the right leverage that I think we can in, enact and enable these changes and provide guidance to the rest of the community as well. So I think that it's going to be very important for us to have these type of discussions. How do we, how do, we do SROV? How do you do DPDK and drive these type of things? Have someone, have a, have a person or a small group basically become the champions of that, of that topic and go and, and cover the entire end-to-end -end use case, not just be like, this is just the client side, but say, this is how we do it from, from start to end production and, and so on, with the idea of being to provide guidance for, for that level. And I think if we, if we take this approach a few times, you know, specifically with, uh, with MIF, DBDK, SROV and, and so on, I think that we'll start to land into a, into a point where we'll, we'll see those commonalities and then we'll, have the right, then we'll have the right set of knowledge centralized enough 
that we can effectively go and build such a library uh, or even work out, does it make sense to build such a library? But I, I think it does and and go and build that thing uh, and and solve the problem across the entire board. So I, so I think we have a real opportunity here. So so I think we we're, we, we definitely need to, to start focusing on some of these questions, especially now that we're starting to get close to providing the initial, uh, do we call it an alpha or a beta? We'll call it the, the, the A release. Um, a release, yeah. <laughs> a release. <laughs> so now we're getting close to a release. Um, we're, we're getting to, you know, we're, we're getting to a point where we can start asking these type of questions. And so, yeah, anyone who wants to, to join in and help with that, like, please absolutely do so. Get, get involved with it. Make sure that the time schedules are good for you. And let's, let's drive this thing. Can I point out one thing too on the concept of like a library, right? It's kind of like the methodology that the DBDK community took out is since we're pushing NSM as a cloud native networking solution, right? Part of that is if you're someone who doesn't want mutability in your world and we make it so that it's not a core function of NSM, then that abstraction is there, the simplicity remains and the standard applications people can come in, get a network service and go about their day. For those of us who constantly want to break our infrastructure, we can import these libraries and start adding more knobs to turn, more, you know, pod manipulations to like bear, et cetera, et cetera. And then it's on all of us obnoxious service providers to make life more complicated while leaving NSM in its natural state simplistic for the rest of the world. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's a huge thing that Ed and I tried to focus on was to uh, really, really early on in our design of this was to do something that made it very easy and natural to do things that uh, that are considered to be standard, but at the same time give you the capability to use it use the project in ways that even both of us can't even dream of at this point. And so I, I think that flexibility within you know that that's why we focus primarily on those high level APIs is that. If, if you look at, there's simple APIs, but there's a lot of flexibility there. And so if, if you find that we are failing at that, at that requirement and you don't have the right set of knobs to turn, uh, then make sure that you bring it up to us so we can, we can think through the problems. Um, I just want to remind of this spec where, uh, which was started by it. It's about uh, bringing uh, physical NICs and physical networks uh, in the NSM world through actually consuming them through through the, the abstraction of a network service. Um, I mean, it's, it was started like more than a month ago. Um, maybe we need to revisit it in regards with the current discussion because this might change slightly the way that we approach it. I mean, if we find that this is useful, of course. Yeah, I would, um, funny here again, I would like to reiterate, and I reiterate what Deborin made, the comment that he made, you know, it's valid that we need to not be really reinventing how DPDK and all those things work. But I think it's important we define how we are going to use various such projects that are going on in parallel. And more importantly, are we abstracting enough so that the CNFs that are riding on the network service mesh really don't have to understand the low level details? And if if, if that effort has already been done, uh, please bear with me. I'm just joining the party here. Um, um, yeah, I, I think how to use the various efforts that are already going on in the community and applying it to the CNFs or the network service mesh. Uh, I, I think that that focus will surely benefit uh, this working group. Yeah. Actually, interestingly, I was talking to a few folks at Intel and they were indicating they may join a network service mesh, which is a good news for the community. So, and one other thing is probably we can also, also invite uh, MJ who evangelizes DPDK to some of the calls to get his input wherein he has insights into how things would look at, at least from a DPDK perspective. Yeah, keep in mind the from a performance point of view, a lot of the deployments are going towards uh, SmartNICs as well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so I it's think not going to be DPDK centric, but uh, I think it's important to abstract.
right out. The way in implementation. Yeah. Um, okay, I guess that we are on the top of the hour already. So one one quick question. Sorry, uh, this is not related to the uh, topic, but this is related to the CNCF proposal. Um, so uh, I just went through it, uh, that um, proposal, and uh, uh, I believe um, it's uh, quite good, and then it addresses most of the uh, common issues. Uh, so the reason I'm asking this question is before we make any changes to it, uh, if you feel that we can probably maintain at this level of abstraction, I think that would be good. Uh, probably uh, when myself and Ramki, we add to it, we will ensure that uh, we maintain the same level and not really get into the details of it. So uh, do, do, do they, would they call us for a, a review meeting type of thing wherein if they want more insights or my question is if we want, we can probably add some links to it. Uh, and uh, also to clarify any possible doubts. Uh, how does the review happen, uh, Nikolai or Frederick? So at the very minimum, I know that, they, that it ends up being presented at the, at the TOC uh, for CNCF. So I don't know if they make a, an immediate decision there or if there's a, if there's a multiple rounds. Okay. Uh, my guess is it could probably go either way because they may reject it, but then say, go fix some things and bring it back. Uh, but I, I suspect what they'll do is they'll, hold a, they'll probably hold a vote and decide whether it gets in or not. Uh, but I, I don't know if that happens on the first meeting or, or otherwise. Okay, sure, okay. So then, uh, okay, uh, we will, myself and Rabki are going to meet after this meeting and then we'll yeah, uh, there's, probably check back with you on the edits, yeah. Yeah. There, there's a CNCF uh, sub, uh, project submission. Um, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I, I don't recall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess you can also check what the other guys did here. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've gone through a few of them. Uh, yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll yeah. connect back with you after that. Right? Mm -hmm. so, of course. Yeah, <laughs> oh, well, I, we're over our time, so. Uh, I don't want to keep people for any longer. Are there any? Is there anything else that's urgent that we need to discuss, or are we are we good to go? I think we're good to go. Yeah, just one update. Quick update is that uh, uh, I believe uh, the demo uh, is confirmed, uh, Frederick, and then it will happen in the Elephant demo booth. Um, and um, the intent is essentially to showcase uh, how ODL talks with uh, NSM. Um, I'll connect back with you. Um, just to give them more details, and we can probably present it here. Uh, great, it would be great if you if you can show something. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. Um, great. Well, with that, uh, thank you, everyone, and we will see you again next week at the same time. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye.